back to Grace for today. Um, it's really great that you can join me here. Uh, as I was preparing for this, I was just thinking, Jesus is outside of time and space. So if you're watching these videos, and where two or three are gathered together, he is here in the midst. So we're taking time out of our day to make God relevant in our everyday lives, to know that he actually can have a real impact and we can have a real relationship with him and it has supernatural consequences that go into your life and into the life of people around you. So if you're enjoying these, I would really encourage you to please go and like our Facebook page or if you watch us on YouTube, give us a subscribe and uh, leave your comments in the section below. So today we're thinking about the fact that righteousness is free for you, but it costs God dearly. And our scripture verse is from Isaiah 53 and verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I love that verse, it's so familiar, um, particularly when you... You're, you're ill or you're sick, it's, it's a go-to verse. And I've had a personal testimony of getting my back healed um, when I pulled the muscle in it and uh, the verse came to mind. And I remember looking up the, the word chastisement because it's one of those words that as a kid you think, well, it's a big word, especially if you're reading King James. So, so what does it mean? So I looked up the chastisement. It basically means he took the punishment by which we have peace. The price that had to be paid in order to buy us peace. So Jesus not only died for our sin, but he died to give us peace. And that is basically peace with God and peace with, with uh, the world around us. And it's got many, many facets to that. So in the Old Testament, the sacrificial lamb was killed quickly and killed humanely. So why did Jesus endure so much suffering? If it was just to cover sin, why did it have to be so brutal? If you've ever seen The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson, it is a really bloody, gory depiction <clears throat> of the Passion of Christ, his, his trial, his, his death, his crucifixion. And it was too much for some people, it was too in your face, it was too much gore, a lot of people complained um, that it was gratuitous violence. Um, but, but that is the Bible, well or, well or not, you, you like to see that sort of thing, the Bible is full of the absolute worst and the absolute best of both the physical world and the spiritual world. And so that film really, really depicts in gory detail what Jesus went through. And I'm sure the reality was a lot worse than what Mel Gibson was able to capture on, on camera. If you think about what he actually endured for us, let's just go through it. In Gethsemane, he went through immense anguish. There was fear, there was despair, there was mental torment. And then at his trial, he was surrounded by people. There was accusations from the religious leaders, from the Romans. You have mocking, you have uh, Pilate just washing his hands, just turning away. You had Peter denying him. He was just left all alone without a friend in the world. And then when you go to, to the, the scourging and the cross, the, the laceration of the whip, the, the complete torture, the violence and the horror of that experience, is something beyond what any of us could ever imagine. And then you've the spiritual aspect of it. The Father turned away. We will never know what that felt like. Jesus was in perfect love and community with the Father and the Spirit from time memorial. And for the Father to turn away is such a significant moment. We will never ever understand the depths of that. But obviously it's, it's emotional to think about when you watch it being depicted in a movie. I mean, I challenge anybody to not be moved. When you see a movie of a, of a righteous person, um, being, you know, abused or, or suffering violence wrongly, it really, it really gets you. There's something in it. That's that's the justice in us that, that's God that's God given, and we shouldn't uh, want to shut that down. Um, but when thinking about what Jesus did for us on the cross, it's really good to remember. But it's not the place where we stay and live from, because we remember that Jesus went on and He rose again, and this is the place uh, where we live from. So what was the reason for it? What was the reason for all the violence? Did Jesus just go through it for nothing? I mean, the pure blood of the righteous one was enough to atone for sin, but Jesus went so much further. The theme for today, righteousness is free for you, but it costs God dearly. And we can start to understand, but we'll never really know the depths of what what he, he did for us. But we can try. So what can we do? We just accept this gift and we can't add anything to it by our own doing. 
Does our effort, does our law keeping, does even our worrying change one thing or help us walk into the amazing life that he has promised that he would give us, that he bought for us? Galatians 2 verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of unmerited favour. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. This gift can only be freely given, not because it's cheap, but truly because it is priceless. But you might be saying, how can I, who did no right, be made righteous? And in the devotional, Joseph Prince has a counter to that. It says, how could Jesus, who knew no sin, become sin for us on the cross? He took all our sins, past, present and future. So we can be secure in that. Be secure in that knowledge that your sins have been removed as far as these is from the West. That's why we call the church exchange. Because in exchange, he gave us his perfect, everlasting righteousness. And that is the grace of God. Romans 11 verse 6 says, And if by grace, then it is no longer works. Otherwise grace is no longer grace. But if it's of works, it's no longer grace. Otherwise work is no longer work. And that's classic Paul rapping a whole lot of theology into a really distinct little stanza. Hopefully you follow. If you don't, go away, read on it, meditate on it, think about it. But there is no middle road. It's either Jesus' work or our efforts. You're either trying to be righteous by God's unmerited favour or you're trying to get it through your own works. You're either depending on yourself or you're depending on Jesus. So because he has done it for you, we can stop our striving and we can stop our, our self-effort. We can breathe, we can relax and we can just rest in his finished work. And if you accept this free gift of righteousness, then you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Just let that settle. Let that become your identity. Whatever you're doing today, just think about it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And this is the place that we live out of. So expect the blessings of the righteous to manifest in your life. Proverbs 10 verse 6 says, Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Moses said to uh, the children of Israel, I set before you this day blessings and cursings. Choose blessings. And there's a whole list of blessings and cursings. And basically it was dependent on their ability to perform the law. But Christ has fulfilled the law for us. So go back and read it in Deuteronomy. All the blessings that God set up for the children of Israel are here now for the children of God through the finished work of Jesus. So today I would like us to, to take communion together. And uh, what... I would like to do when we're doing it is uh, we take the bread and the cup let's exchange a few things let's see what he'd done on the cross and let's exchange all the torment and the things that he went through just leave them there and apply them apply his work to your life whatever it may be so we take we take the bread and we think about what you did Jesus and we exchange your anguish anguish for gladness we exchange our fear for the courage and your perfect love. And we exchange despair for hope. We exchange mental torment for soundness of mind. We exchange violence for peace. We exchange horror for delight in the beautiful world around us and the people around us. We exchange poverty for your richness. And we exchange our ailments, sickness and diseases for your health, your vitality, and your wholeness. And we exchange thinking about God's absence, thinking that God has left us alone, to knowing securely that God is ever-present and living with inside us. Amen. And likewise, we take the cup. The blood's built, the perfect sacrifice. There's nothing more that we can do. There's nothing more we could add to it. So let's just live, let's just accept, live out of that place. Let it flow into every single area of your life. Start small and gradually let, just let in, like let Jesus into every room. He's relevant, he can change, he can affect change in every single situation, every single area in your life. So we remember your blood and your sacrifice, amen. So today's final thought, 
Am I depending on Jesus or am I depending on myself and my works to be righteous before God? And I would encourage you just to please look to Jesus. It's the only way. There are many ways out there. There are many philosophies out there. There are many other thoughts out there. But Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. So let's look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. And be blessed today.